Hey folks, Ben Gilbert here from Engadget, and we've got the CEO and head of NVIDIA, uh, Jen Sun Huang. I hope I'm not completely butchering that. Jensen. Forgive me if I did. Okay, we're gonna go with Jensen for now then. Jensen uh, it is. And we are uh, hot off the heels of your Montreal event where you guys revealed uh, a whole bunch of stuff. If you could just very briefly give me a kind of quick walkthrough of the, the big announcements. We announced several things. The first thing we announced was game stream. Yep. The ability to stream from PC to Shield with Shield being a game console. This way you can enjoy your, all your latest, greatest games on PC through the Steam uh, UI called Big Picture and enjoy it on big, t big screen TV. Sure. And that's October 28th, right? Just to be clear, coming out October 28th, that's the evolution of the streaming that we already saw on the Shield when the Shield launched this past summer, right? That's right. And, okay. and uh, to help celebrate that day, uh, we're offering a bundle of uh, games and Shield um, uh, when you buy a GTX 660 or GTX 7, uh, 760 and a different bundle, even better bundle with 770, 780 and Titan. In the case of the 660, you know, you're going to get about $150 worth of value uh, for a graphics card that's $200. So, that, so that's uh, number one game stream. The second thing we announced uh, was um, uh, this new technology that allows us to do shadow play and game stream at the same time integrated into Twitch. And this way you could now, uh, with very, very little overhead, uh, enjoy playing games by sharing it with your friends. We then announced a big, big deal, a brand new technology the world's never seen before we call G-Sync. And it solves the stutter problem, the tearing problem, and the lag problem that we all you know, hate about uh, video games today. Uh, we were really, really great to have um, Carmack and Sweeney and uh, Johan Anderson uh, to come and celebrate it with us. Sure. And they were able to share their perspective about how, how wonderful G-Sync is and, and how revolutionary the technology is. And then lastly, we announced GTX 780 Ti, mm -hmm. our newest um, high-end enthusiast graphics card. Okay. So it was a pretty packed day. Yeah, it certainly was. So this today was pretty pretty heavy on news hits, and uh, I think the biggest thing was probably the G Sync, right? Like that seems like what you're saying. If that is all the case, and it seems to be, considering that uh, John Carmack and Tim Sweeney and uh, Johan Anderson were here to kind of. Uh, I don't know how to put this. They they were here to uh, to back it up, right? They back up those claims. They're here to uh, to stand up behind those things, and uh, it, it seems like something that could really apply to more than just games, right? It's something where John Carmack working at Oculus. It's something that you could see maybe in a VR headset, right? It's solving the kind of issues that there are with other technologies beyond just gaming displays, right? Yeah, it's a it's a pretty big deal. You know, G-Sync um, fundamentally changes the way the monitor and the computer system communicates. Right today. The GPU and the monitor are really two independent things. They're basically operating at completely different rates. As a result of that, um, you have fundamentally this problem of uh, synchronization between these two systems. With G-Sync, instead of having two systems that are running at completely different rates, we now have the monitor, which has now become a slave to the GPU. So as soon as the GPU is completed rendering a frame, that's when we kick off the update to sure. the monitor. It makes perfect perfect sense, um, but the innovation requires a brand new GPU uh, with a different way of controlling monitors. Uh, requires a new uh, monitor technology we call G-Sync, and of course a lot of software in between to make it possible. Uh, th those three guys, you know, are, are uh, as you know, luminaries of the computer graphics industry, sure. luminaries of the game development industry, and uh, it was it was really really kind of them to come here and um, uh, launch it with us, uh, endorse uh, G-Sync, uh, tell people how excited they are about this technology. Now, where can you apply this technology? We started with computer monitors, but basically anywhere where you have 3D graphics that you would like to enjoy, uh, computer-generated graphics that you would like to enjoy without tearing, without stuttering, without the additional lag. And so it could be it could be in a head-mounted display. It could be on television someday. Sure. Um, but anything that just wants to have silky th smooth, perfectly um, smooth computer graphics. Cool. And uh, it's a it's a module though, right? Like just to be completely clear, this isn't just a software medium. This is an actual chipset that goes into a handful of displays. Uh, and you're working with you know some some companies today. It was Asus, uh, ViewSonic. Philips and BenQ, I think, is all right. for. They're all the leading leading monitor companies for gamers. Sure. And um, you take this little module; uh, it fits uh, perfectly into one of these uh, one of these displays. Uh, when you combine it with a 4K display, it's just going to be completely out of this world. And so, 
uh, you know, we're going to see in, in uh, Q1 next year monitors from these, uh, from these companies. And they hopefully won't be too expensive? Well, you know, we we got to get this thing, uh, this uh, this technology, in as low as affordable a price point as we can, sure. so that gamers all over the world can enjoy it. And so, um, you know, my my sense is that you're going to see uh, a very large number of displays with it. Okay. Uh, and the other uh, conversations that are that are happening today, I think a lot of it involves uh, uh, evolves around Android, right? There's uh, John Carmack speaking about the the future Oculus that might be running on Android. There's uh, the Shield that is, of course, a very prominent Android console. And I'm interested to to hear what your thoughts are on on that as a, uh, a kind of medium for video games. Uh, traditionally, I have not been super into it just because uh, there's a lot of mobile stuff there, but as things change and it becomes more of a uh, an OS that facilitates perhaps other things, right? Like it, Android facilitates PC streaming on, on the Shield. Uh, I, I guess I'm wondering what you see as the kind of evolution there of Android gaming. Well, the way to think about Android, Android is the world's most open, but yet um, productized operating system. Mm -hmm. You know, Android, as you know, has a, a mobile version that most people use in phones. But you're going to see Android in cars. You're going to see Android in TVs. You're going to see Android in computers. Sure. You already see Android on one PCs available from HP and Dell and Lenovo and Asus and Acer. And um, so you're going to see Android really, really proliferating everywhere. Um, it has the benefit of having more people working on this platform than any other platform combined. And the reason for that is because the operating system is, is largely open. And yet, on the other hand, uh, with Google's uh, shepherding of it, um, every season it takes a big leap forward uh, in an organized way. And once it takes the big leap forward, it goes to the top of the tree. Um, from there, it becomes open source to any company. And so whether you're a startup company or a large company in any industry, in any country, um, you can pull down the Android operating system and use that as your starting point. So, um, you know, as I travel the world, I see people using it to build TVs now, build cars now, build vacuum cleaners sure. now. And so refrigerators. so refrigerators now. And so you're going to see Android literally everywhere. Sure. And it makes perfect sense that it would be the operating system that that uh, Carmack is going to put in the Oculus. Um, the, to us, the reason why Android is such an important platform is we want to do for Android what we what GeForce did for PCs. What GeForce did for PCs was turn an open platform personal computing device and turned it into a game platform. You mean the GeForce Experience specifically? or GeForce, the graphics chip. Understood. Yeah, and it turned a PC, a, a commodity PC that you use for Excel and PowerPoint and and turned it into a game console, sure. if you will. We would like to do the same for Android devices. And by creating Shield, uh, we're galvanizing, we're focusing all the game developers around the world on a device that allows them to create a great gaming experience on a platform that today is prolific, but isn't a particularly good gaming platform. And we think we can change that. We can change that the way we changed it for PCs, and that's really why Shield is, is created. Okay, and uh, I know you've got some limited time here, so I've got one more question that I wanted to make sure I got in before uh, before we let you go, and it's uh, specifically with regards to Shield. Uh, the the mobile model was uh, something I was told by uh, I believe it was you, Jesh, at Nvidia about how every year there would be a, a kind of new version of Shield, uh, given that there's new Tegra chips coming out, and that's kind of how the mobile industry works. Uh, presumably, we can expect a Shield two in 2014. Yeah, uh, we should expect a new shield when there, whenever there's a new Tegra. Sure. And uh, sure. we uh, create a new Tegra every year. Um, we've announced uh, the next Tegra is um, uh, named Project Logan. Right. Um, Project Logan is the world's first mobile processor that is um, has all of the architectural sophistication that you see in a PC platform today. It's based on exactly the same architecture mm -hmm. as the Titan GPU that that um, everybody everybody loves, um, and so the Kepler GPU is now available in mobile form factor. Uh, we're getting Logan ready for for the market, and um, uh, I, it would it would bring me great joy if Shield was the first customer for Logan, sure. um, and um, uh, and helps people. Uh, realize uh, how great uh, mobile device can be. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll uh, we'll see more at CES or something, right? Well, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Indeed. Well, thank you very much, John. See you at CES, and we'll talk. About it. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. All right. Thanks again. <laughs>